Welcome back to Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is episode 4 of our Confederate campaign. It's just come to my attention that there has been a development patch update since I started this series. And we've seen a couple of odd sort of AI behaviour uh, things happening in the last episode. So if that does carry on, it might be that I need to start the campaign again. We'll wait and see if we experience any sort of strange AI behaviour or kind of rooting, anything like that. Uh, if, if that's the case, maybe I'll have to have a look at starting another campaign with this. Perhaps we'll start with a union this time. But anyway, so in the last episode we left off, we just fought a nice big battle down here in southwestern Missouri where McCulloch's Western Army, backed up by the Missouri Guard, State Guard under Major General John C. Breckinridge, saw off the Union advance from the Army of the West and the Army of the Mississippi. We basically sent them packing back north, up north, So, uh, but we really don't have the manpower to pursue them and we're still kind of working on improving the supply situation out here in the western theater so we're probably going to hang tight with mcculloch's army for now and see if they can't get some of these 1700 disabled men back into into their units we're short on manpower even though we're still early in the war but i mean we have used up all the recruits that were available so this is the western army here under mcculloch who done he did a pretty good job in charge there, even though his stats aren't amazing but you know that's quite done quite well Mosby M Parsons Brigadier General commanding that division there Sterling Price with the 2nd Division he's got some nice looking stats now actually like pretty well I mean pretty average but not bad for this point in the game um, Parsons with a nice 3 in leadership there and then Nathan Bedford Forrest who commands our cavalry division looking pretty good as well uh, we have Colonel McIntosh and then a tiny force under Bushrod Johnson with like we should have 600 men once we get those guys the disabled men back into circulation into their units so that that's that uh on the eastern front the eastern front we fought a couple of nice big battles here and we've given the union a bloody nose and sent these guys packing back to the north the department of pennsylvania who are still sitting there with twelve thousand men facing joe johnson's force of the army of the shenandoah with somewhere around 13 14 000 men and we also have Beauregard with his army of the Potomac. Uh, we will end up renaming these armies once we can form full armies with corps. So really these are just small forces that are actually only core size at the moment. And it'll remain like that until we unlock the military two policy when we can make full armies with ind individual corps. So for now, we're working on Militia Act 2, which will give us some more recruits. And then we'll probably work on the funding policy because I suspect we're going to start running out of money. So, without any further waffle, we're going to get started right away. As always, the plan remains to stay on the defensive in the Eastern Theatre. We're staying on the defensive. Now, in the centre, perhaps we're going to push up into Kentucky, but maybe not just yet. It's still only August 1861. So, this is a newspaper report just saying that we're invading the North because we're pushing up into Missouri. So, we've got 12 days to go until Militia Act 3. So, hopefully, we can just hang on carry on building our forts and defensive positions garnet's army of the northwest with 1300 men here it's just tiny we've got no one really to put in it let's see what we've got available we do have 10,000 men total but not really enough from any individual region to add a viable force well we could do a cavalry brigade from north carolina but is that really going to do much uh, West Virginia, we do have 1,400 available from West Virginia, but there's only 42 support, so those troops are likely to have low morale, so we'll leave that for now. If need be, we could raise this as a cavalry unit, but we'll leave that for now, I think. We have suffered 7,500 casualties, give or take. The Union suffered 15,800, we've suffered 7,800. So as you can see here, we had the Battle of Manassas Junction on the 9th of July, then 10 days later, the Battle of Fredericksburg Bridge, which was a major victory for us. We really hammered them there. And then the Battle of Springfield over in the Western Theatre, where, again, we did a good job and held our lines. But it was kind of lucky. So they are pulling back up to the north a little bit. But we, like I say, we really don't have the ability to chase him down because he just simply... That's too many men. There's still, I mean, there's still going to be 16,000 men in that army there. So really, the Western Army is going to pull back this way. We're not in a position to invade Missouri with this force at all. Possibly, once this fort is complete in 10 days and we push north, 
with the Nashville District Force under Major General Albert Sidney Johnson. Possibly that will take one of those armies out of the West, but he does have another force up here, the Army of the Ohio, Foreman, which will have 6,000 men once uh, he gets his recruits in there, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. So he's actually bringing the Army of the Missouri down. Is like, I think he's actually come back for another fight because we took on the Army of the West in the last battle. The Army of the M Mississippi arrived, but didn't really take part in the fighting. I don't think there's much we can really do here in, the, in terms of upgrades, Mississippi rifles for those guys, Springfield muskets for slacksmen, but he has only got 700 effectives. I mean, it's not really not really much we can do with these tiny little forces that we have in this army. So possibly it's going to be another fight in the, in the west here. We're drawing him further away from his supply base. That suits us just fine. What? Oh. So look what happened here. His force, the army uh, of occupation. 12,000 men. They were obviously must have been out here in the valley and slipped past us. Heading for Richmond, and all we have in Richmond is 2,700 men under Magruder. It's no good. And now it says they're burning down our supply depot, which, I mean, is bollocks, because how would they do that when our army's getting camped right next door? But we're going to have to take them on. Joe Johnson's army. Division under Jackson. The other under William H.T. Walker. A tiny cavalry force, 260 men. muskets for these guys we can upgrade those we don't have much in the way of weapons so nothing really Mississippi rifles enough for one unit Hall rifle eight and a half rounds a minute reboard muskets hmm. let's give these guys Mississippi rifles um, Sibley's Brigade brand new troops let's give these guys the reboards see if we can't take them on so into the Hampton division we're going to add that cavalry unit I was talking about from North Carolina again 2,000 men from Maryland but 36 morale for the state so it's not not worth doing Small cavalry force, 1,250 men. So, here we are. A nice engagement. Army of the Shenandoah against the Army of Occupation under McClellan. He does have 31 guns. We outnumber them slightly. Joe Johnson versus McClellan. Battle of Rapidan Bridge, Virginia. McClellan, of course, renowned for his timidity. Let's see how he performs in this battle. He probably thinks he's facing 45,000 rebels. <laughs> it wouldn't be too out of character for him. So we are on the offensive in this battle. So this tiny f cavalry force under Stuart, we're going to keep them out of the fight. We'll use them just as scouts, really. Um, I suspect he's going to... So they're coming in from over here. I suspect he's going to set up a defensive position somewhere along here. I would think. But possibly not. Either way, we're going to cross the uh, Rapidan. Oh no, the Rappahannock, sorry. <laughs> Rapidan? Why did I say Rapidan? We're going to cross the Rappahannock. And engage. It's not much favourable ground here. It looks, looks pretty rough. We're going to go slowly. The battle's starting at 1600, so it's already evening, almost evening time. But I mean, it's summer, so it should stay light for another few hours yet. Colonel Stewart, you might remember, was disgraced in the first battle, which, again, I've said it a few times, but that was ridiculous. Since it was, he was only involved in a little skirmish and his men ended up routing. So he's come in here. I can't actually see an objective to hold. Usually the computer player, the AI, will hang out next to the objectives, or quite often. But I'm not saying, oh, unless he came in here, I didn't see that, or there. 
Well, let's wait and see what develops. Maybe we'll head over this way to these crossroads here. Now remember the orders take a little while to get through to the commanders. Causing a few problems and slowing us down, fragmenting our troops. We'll get them in position and let them catch their breath once they're there. So that's the end of the day. We didn't spot the enemy. Ah, so there we are. We've got a little objective up here. So I bet that's where he is. So if he is there, we're going to send one division up this way. The other one straight on. Yeah, so Jackson is going to face him here. And Walker's division is going to come around, hopefully hit him in the flanks. Because I bet he's got defensive positions arranged. Let's go for that. Stewart's brigade just up here. I'm going to advance them a little bit to see if we can't spot the enemy. Oh, but actually, no, there they are. Just as I've begun the day. Oh, so here they are. Defending this area right here. So walkers, guys, we're going to swing them around like this. It's a very wooded area here. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to be a pretty fight, I don't think. Send Stuart forward a bit. Not too much. Now, why don't we stick Jackson up here? I've got full faith in Jackson and his division. Well, not full, but enough. <laughs> so Walker's division is going to swing around. Barnard B's division, uh, brigade. Sibley and Edmund Kirby Smith. If you've ever seen the movie The Good, The Bad and the Ugly, Sibley's one of the guys uh, in that bit when, he, when they're in the West there in Arizona. In real, I feel Sibley was a, a pretty ineffectual commander. Um, well, he had limited resources out there. Let's see what these guns are doing in the damn water. In the Pond. It's going to take a bit of to get in place. Right. Jackson's men are coming around this way. I thought they would have gone around the north side. Oh, he's got his skirmishers out. So his guys are positioned up on this little ridge. He's made himself a defensive um, barrier here. It's an okay position for him, actually, I think. Some guns on the flank as well. They're firing them already. Yeah, so we're going to press in. Let our guys get in place. Pendleton is kind of coming out of the little swampy area. Men forward a bit. They're going to go into this creek bed for a bit of uh, cover, I think, but it means we're going to have the high ground here. Not sure how much difference that's going to make in the fight, but, I mean, any little thing that's an advantage can help. They've had 100 casualties. I'm not sure how. We haven't engaged them. Okay, let's see if we can't cause those guns some problems. I'm going to get skirmishers out. So a couple of skirmisher companies will be going forward. And in fact, we're going to change these guys to long range fire. Since we're armed with musket, uh, with rifles. Yeah, all these guys have got rifles. So that gives us nice long range fire. But first, these skirmishers, we're going to send them up against this gun. Skirmishers out from Sibley as well. See if we can't swing around with B's brigade and hit them in the flank when they hopefully come to engage our two brigades which will push forward towards this creek. Our guns firing, they are exhausted. Not sure if we'll be effective there. Um, Jackson's division still getting into, play, into, into position. Kind of just a waiting game now until we get in place those guns but we're going to lose men there we should be able to drive them back possibly disrupt their formation as well if they send troops to counter our skirmishers our guns are coming into position and we'll shell them with our 12 pounder we've got all day there's no rush for us to get into this fight so 
Yeah, let's get Barnard B screen as well. There as well. Jax's division. Long range. Again, I'm fairly sure we all have rifles in this brigade. Mississippi rifles. Springfield rifle musket. And, yeah, rifles as well. So these gunners are suffering casualties. I mean, we are as well, obviously. But we've lost five. They've lost 45. We want, to, yeah, we want to kill as many of their gunners as possible since we are outgunned. So Rosecrans's, Brig Rosecrans's Brigade has gone to ground and we can't see them now for some reason. More guns up on the flank here. So the next phase of this plan is going to be to pin these men behind the barricades in place while Jackson's uh, Division pushes down. First move shipping these guns in. There they are, they're away. So they lost 100 men. Skirmish has done a good job there. Seven casualties. Not bad. They've abandoned their guns. So you see they haven't got the range to fire back. They mustn't have rifles. Ah. B skirmish has broke, but they did lose 40 men. It's understandable. Jackson's brigade's going to get into position. We're going to hit them. Oh, we've lost 20 men in this artillery unit. Ah, it's because those guys are shelling us. But just nothing we can much, much do about that. Unless... Uh, can Stuart take... Oh, no, there's infantry support. Let's push. Try to take those guns. Back. See, we can't send a detachment to fix guns. Well, that went as good as uh, their attempt to keep the guns, but <laughs> not very well. Let's sketch you over here. Bardo's men. Edward Johnson's men. Doing, doing fine, actually. Use the bar push them. Yeah, take some flank and fire from here. This is this Union Force's first engagement as well, I believe, so they are definitely suffering morale penalties here, whereas our guys have already fought in two battles. Some of these are almost uh, ready for their first perk. Still some fighting going on here. The enemy's retreating, so he's had enough already. But like they were outnumbered, and this is their first battle, and we had them in a bit of a pincer movement here, really. I'm not sure if this was um, unrealistic, maybe, from the computer. Like I was saying, I'm not sure if there's any problems with the AI at the moment, but uh, I think this was okay. Hard to say, really, to be honest. I think it was a, a decent manoeuvre for myself without... <laughs> to see how, uh, you know, did anything special. So he's pulled back. Let's see where they go on the campaign map. See what's what. We're victorious. Uh, minor victory. We killed 2,600 of his men. We lost 25 guns. We lost 371 men, so they like, decided. Right?
So another small victory here in Virginia. He had to suffer a battlefield defeat. Which is making me think there's an issue with the AI maybe. So I've, I've got this set on hard for the AI with uh, mediocre aggression. Not sure. Maybe I should have set the aggression higher, but... Usually he plays okay on those settings. Like, it makes it reasonably realistic. <clears throat> Whereas these battles have felt pretty easy. Um, although, like, to be fair, this was... A, I think we were quite well positioned here and uh, struck the enemy well. And it was McClellan, so it's kind of hard to say. The enemy suffered a report casualties of 2,612 men. 301 killed and 21 captured. Uh, we lost 371 men, 58 killed, 65 missing, the rest wounded. Also captured 1,108 rifles and 11 guns from the battlefield. So that was the Battle of Rapidan Bridge. So which way is he going to retreat now? But we've lost our supply depot here. That's, that's so annoying. We are in the middle of upgrading the Richmond depot as well. Hampton Division is getting those reinforcements. That'll take them to 4,000. So he's just going to... Oh, so we've got a perk for Joe Johnson's army. And I think we're going to give them flying column, which is one of the ones I quite like. So they march a little bit faster um, and can hold more supplies. I like that one. I like ambulance corps as well. So this fort we were building up here just disappears, even though we're halfway through building it, more than halfway through. That doesn't seem right to me. In fact, that's really annoying. So the army of the occupa army of occupation has escaped back over the river here and onto this peninsula. Oh no! Oh, we rebuilt. We start rebuilding that fort. So it just must just stop when we're not here. Two days left for Militia Act 2. That should get us some more reinforcements. There's uh, some more re recruits. Let's try another depot. That'll give us a depot here and a depot there uh, just near Manassas. Stuart still defamed. Ridiculous. I am concerned about this. Let's say 19,000 men now. We've got nobody to add to this army. Possibly some artillery. So we've recruited a unit of um, horse artillery to go with this a division of cavalry. Aha! The fort is completed here. So this is uh, Fort Phelps. I'm going to stick some troops in there. If it's low quality troops, that's not too bad. For now, <laughs> Lord, uh, Lord Phelps? Ford, F Fort Phelps. We're going to pop some men in there. Oh, so, hang on. Oh, so Militia Act 2 is complete now. I can't remember seeing that come up, but... So we've got Militia Act 2 now, so we, it means we do have some units available. But firstly, let's pop somebody into Fort Phelps. Kentucky troops will be fine for this. 1,500 guys. In white. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to leave 1,600 men here guarding Nashville for now. And I feel like that's probably okay for the moment. We will add more troops. And let's push up. Let's push up into Kentucky, into central Kentucky here. We'll take Munfordville. Threaten Louisville, Kentucky. We're going to add a Missouri Infantry Brigade to the Western Army. That's going to be under William Barksdale. And we're going to recruit a couple of units into the Missouri State Guard. Texas. 1,500 men from Texas. And Heinemann. And we're also going to recruit from Texas artillery. So once these are ready, we'll transfer them into the other unit. Into the Western Army. Uh, next, yeah. Uh, actually, we're going to work on... Oh, no. Ooh. 
credit rating on BBB Plus. So yeah, let's we'll do government funding. Oh, we Potomac, we're gonna add some recruits in these armies. Department of Pennsylvania coming just magic themselves across here somehow. Again, I'm not really sure how it's just they've obviously snuck past somehow. The Union armies are starting to be quite large out here in the east. As we knew they would be. So we're going to add a new division here. Uh, Hardy, yeah, that's fine. So we're going to add three brigades of infantry and one artillery battery to this. And we're going to let the computer just automatic. So see, these guys have been selected from Maryland and I don't want that at all. Support 38. They're going to be low morale troops, so we are going to pop them back into the pot. Um, and Delaware as well. Again, I'm not having troops from Delaware with 43 support. We'll have to recruit them ourselves. Uh, so the guys are going to come from South Carolina. 3,000 man infantry brigade. Not 3,000. 2,250. So that'll take Johnson's army to Shenandoah up to 22,000 men. And a couple of new brigades for Beauregard as well. Take him to about 25,000. Army of Occupation is on the move. This fort is finished. Fort Dick Garrison. So we've manned this uh, Fort Dick Garrison with some troops. We have, we'll have a garrison of 5,400 men, which I feel quite confident they're going to be able to hold this for at least a little while. Um, reinforcements coming to both these armies. Reinforcements on their way to the Western Army. Yeah, Fort Phelps, that's getting their garrison. We've got garrisons in these places. Not Fort Hyman, but uh, Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson both have just under 2,000 men. The Nashville District Force is pushed up into central Kentucky. We will begin constructing a depot up here. Should help supplies flow from Nashville up to this area. And I feel like this might be a decent place to leave things for now. So we're holding in the west. We just haven't got the manpower to push north just yet. We're waiting for the re reinforcements. And possibly then we will push up and see if we can't knock the army from the Mississippi back towards northern Missouri. In the east. Oh, we've also finished uh, Fort Warren at Richmond. Which will release the Hampton Division to maybe come north a little and possibly build another fort near Fredericksburg and that would then release the army of the Shenandoah to go elsewhere but the, the Fort Dick is an important one that we're going to have to hold here so we will build that up even more so yeah the plan remains the same hold the Eastern Theatre and push on in the other areas maybe we'll build up the army from Northwest slightly as well there doesn't seem to be any of their forces out here in the west at all. I could be mistaken, of course, because we can't see anything through the fog of war. But they've got large armies in the Eastern Theatre. This, if they all, if these three combine to fight us, that will be a hell of a fight. But I suspect that'll be for the next episode. So I hope you did enjoy this one. It's been a bit slow going. We've had a, a nice battle there in Central uh, Virginia. Um, we're building up the army still, it's still very early days of the war, September 6th, 1861, so plenty of time left to go. Um, if you did like the video, leave a like, leave a comment if you've got any comments on anything uh, that I should be doing that I'm doing wrong. If you think the computer's not behaving properly on this maybe, uh, the AI is not good, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.